No, no. How low? Whoa, gotta go. Oh, hello. Last month, I did an Is It Worth It To Buy video about the then available, but now sold out, Festival in a Box, Secret Lair, Las Vegas, 2024. In the video, one of my many points was that prior Festival in a Box Secret Layers had better promos. My main example being that just last year, the 2023 Vegas Festival in a Box came with a promo Mox Opal, among other staples, and that this year's came with a promo Ponder, promo Swords to Plowshares, and promo Basic Land. As I always do with Secret Layer reviews, I use the lowest prices of non-promo versions of the cards as a means to help us assess worth, as these are the Is It Worth It to Buy series. At the time of last year's convention in a box, Mox Opal was going for around $100. Ponder was, you know, a couple of bucks. Comparing the two, I concluded that better, more valuable cards had been selected as inclusions in the past, and that while I really, really like Mystery Booster 2, this year's Festival in a Box nonetheless had, among other issues that I outlined, worse included promos. When I showed the value of these two secret layers, however, many, many commentators took umbrage with the fact that I valued the Ponder promo at little more than a couple of bucks. This is because, at the time, there were listings for this promo Ponder at $30 to $40 on the secondary market. A lot of people were confused as to why I valued the Ponder this way when it was listed for $30 to $40. Some people even seemed incensed and made posts accusing me of everything from misleading viewers to general incompetence, but I maintained that $30 to $40 was not an accurate reflection of value, and that as soon as these secret layers actually shipped, the price would plummet. And now that they have indeed shipped, we can see that those $30 to $40 pre-shipping prices have actually dropped all the way down to about $2 to $3 each. More or less exactly what I said it would be worth. In fact, it looks like plenty have gone for a buck 99 actually. So yeah, I stand by my evaluation that prior festival in a boxes had a lot more value in terms of their extras. Not just because last year's had a Mox Opal, Mox Tantalite, Soul Ring, and 24 draft booster packs instead of just three collector booster packs, but there's more to this video than a simple, I told you so. I actually think there's a lot of misconceptions about the value of Magic the Gathering cards, misunderstandings about the relationship between strong game pieces and the cost to buy said game pieces, and of course, some very dangerous mistakes made when it comes to pre-sale and pre-order pricing. Let's discuss, shall we? Blah 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 blah. You know, honestly, when I saw how low those Ponder promos were selling for, I thought maybe I should give like 40 of them away as a stunt, but it's just a $3 card. That's not that special. Which is why I decided to give away 40 fetch lands instead on my next Whatnot stream. 40 fetch lands, that's right. On October 21st at 11 a.m. Pacific, I'll be giving away 40 fetch lands. That's a play set of all 10 fetch lands. Wow, I figured, let me give away cards people actually get a lot of use out of, and there's nothing, nothing more useful than fetch lands. All you have to do is come log in and hang out with me for my next whatnot stream and maybe, just maybe, you'll walk home with a free play set of fetch lands. You know, whatnot is just as if Twitch and eBay had a baby. People can list items as auctions or buy it now prices, and then they stream themselves selling those items. I do. You can check out my streams, and when you do, I'll give you $15 to spend on Magic the Gathering products. Yeah, 15 bucks worth of Magic the Gathering products, all for you for free when you create an account at www.whatnot.com forward slash invite forward slash Tolarian College. So if you want a free play set of fetch lands, I've got 40 of them, and I'm giving them all away on October 21st. Plus, everyone who creates a brand new account gets a $15 credit to use anywhere on Whatnot, including my own store, which I got everything from signed play mats to signed academic deck boxes, and so much more. So claim your $15 of credit to spend on anything you want, from Magic Gathering cards and packs to, well, whatever. It's Whatnot. Go to www.whatnot.com forward slash invite 
forward slash Tolarian College and then join me for the Fetchland giveaway on October 21st. Thank you, Whatnot, for sponsoring this video. And scene. Ad is over. So, I am not going to spend the entire video talking about the Ponder promo because I really want to talk about evaluating special card pricing and pre-sale problems, but the Ponder promo connects to those two issues rather nicely. One of the things I found most surprising about people's reaction to valuing the Ponder at just a couple of bucks instead of 30 to 40 bucks is that even if you value it at the higher price, my point about this year's festival in a box still stands. It has less value and less inclusions than prior years. Even if the Ponder promo had maintained its $30 to $40 price tag, then the total price of the guaranteed singles in the Vegas 2024 Festival in a Box would have been around $50, which is still $40 less than the Vegas 2023 Festival in a Box, and is not even addressing issues such as how many booster packs that Festival in a Box contained versus this year's. But here's the thing, we knew it wouldn't maintain that value. Why? Because in the vast majority of cases, promo versions of widely available $2 cards are not worth that much money. In fact, all you have to do is look at other promo ponders to get an idea of where this one was going to fall. Ponder has been printed as a promo many times, and the most expensive ponder, as of the recording of this video, is the textless full art Magic Player Rewards Ponder, which has a market value of about $11. Okay, technically there's one ponder more expensive, the promo retro frame ponder, that was awarded as a prize to players who made the top eight of the Legacy Tournament at Eternal Weekend 2022, as in eight players total per tournament. There were three Eternal Weekend events in 2022, one in North America, one in Asia, and one held online. So that means there are only 24 copies of this promo Ponder in the entire world. As a result, this particular printing of Ponder is literally priceless. Seriously, there is no price listed for it on TCG Player. But this expensive Ponder, as well as the Player Rewards Promo Ponder and other Secret Layer Promo Ponders that have been printed, all prove my point precisely. Promos are not worth that much more money relative to the price of their earlier printings, unless the promo is particularly exceptionally rare or otherwise special. That's why the Ponder price at the time I recorded my Is It Worth It To Buy video was so high. These promos were very rare at the time, only available in limited supply at earlier Magic Cons in 2024. But after the release of Festival in a Box Vegas 2024, that limited supply would balloon dramatically. And when it did, the price plummeted. Now, I also mentioned that promos can be a marked step up in price if the promo is particularly special. By this, I mean a promo variant of a popular card designed by a particularly famous or popular artist. Take the Junji Ito Thoughtseize, for example. This is a $40 card. It's the 11th most expensive non-foil card in a secret layer drop ever, in fact. That's because it was illustrated by one of the most famous horror manga artists in the world. And all due respect to Jay Ryan, who created the turtle eating a Chicago-style pizza and hot dog promo, and Heiko Mueller, who created the Tulip Boy Swords to Plowshares promo, but they simply are not Junji Ito. And don't get me wrong, I like the art on these cards. But there's just no reason why this promo ponder would have maintained such a high price when even other secret layer promo ponders did not. Along those same lines, this is why when a secret layer foil is super expensive, we don't treat it as such in our evaluations. Take Trickbind, for example. At the time I was evaluating the Ghostbusters secret layer drops, Trickbind's foil printing was $96, but its non-foil version was only about $5. And some players watching that video might have thought, wait, if the foil trick bind is a $96 card, how come the foil version of that secret layer isn't automatically an A+. Well, it's not because the game piece really isn't worth that. Trickbind's high price is because, as a collectible, there simply never were many foils of the card from such an older set, and those that did exist often didn't survive the nearly 20 years since they were opened in a pack. Look at how the foil version of the Secret Layer Trickbind is now only going for 
since. And even the original printing foil has dropped to a market price of $66. Scarcity was the reason behind its inflated price. Just like the scarcity of the Turtle Ponder promo was behind its. In the majority of cases, once a card is no longer scarce, the card is no longer as valuable. That's just basic economics, but it's easy to forget that when evaluating card prices for new releases, especially when looking at pre-sale prices. Now, is this true of all Secret Layer versions? Of course not. And in fact, I have another video coming out soon that is going to focus on which Secret Layers turned out to have very, very valuable collectibles and why, but the point I want to emphasize is, you can't just go to TCG Player and type in a card, see that it's selling for 100, 200, or even $40, and then immediately assume that that is its value without first asking further questions. But enough about the price of this particular Ponder promo. As I said, the price the promo landed on eventually is basically irrelevant to the larger point of why I always use lowest available pricing for evaluating cards and things like secret layers. So let's talk about that instead. Any card can be made into a promo, and that promo may end up with a value greater than that of the game piece selected. Even though in this instance, both the Ponder and the Swords to Plowshares and the uh, basic planes all dropped to being just a couple of bucks each, what if they had maintained their presale value? It's feasible that the pizza-eating Chicago Turtle could have kept some, if not all, of its value. And it is also feasible that, with time, especially if this promo art is never reprinted, this particular promo will go up in value. But even if you come back to me in one or two years and tell me, hey, professor, that Pizza Turtle Chicago Ponder is now $20, it's now $40, it's now $70, I will still stand by my claim that the inclusions of Mox Opal and Mox Tantalite made for more worthwhile promos than in the 2024 secret layer. And that is because of the base value of the cards. At the time it was selected to be a promo for Festival in a Box, the cheapest you could buy a Mox Opal for was about $100. Again, that is the value not of the promo, but of the card itself. Even if some way, somehow, the Special Ponder promo was selling for a high amount, its own base version is still just a $2 card. I feel that looking at the cheapest available version gives us the most accurate evaluation of a card's value, especially when it comes to evaluating a promo. After all, there are versions of a basic island out there that are hundreds of dollars, but if a new secret layer comes out that is offering only a basic island and you wanted to determine if it was a good financial value, you wouldn't point to the highest, rarest version of that card to make the determination, you'd point to the lowest. And of course, I want to stress, as I always do, that there's many other ways to evaluate magic cards in terms of worth. Your own personal enjoyment of the card or its promo art is a very valid reason to ascribe more value. More value for you, anyway. And there's nothing wrong with that. But financially, you simply cannot look at a $2 card and a $100 card and say that they have the same value just because the $2 card has a promo version with an elevated value about it. It's still essentially a $2 card, and as this promo ponder has shown us, after leaving presale, its promo's inflated price is very, very likely going to go down. That's because the presale pricing is a lie. Now, technically, the Chicago Turtle Ponder was not, strictly speaking, a presale item. The card had been given away at MagicCon Chicago and a few other events, but I treated those $30 to $40 listings as essentially a presale price because only a small, very small to the relative player base, number of those cards would have been distributed. But Festival in a Box was going to inject big numbers of these cards throughout the player base, and I knew those $30 to $40 listings were not an accurate reflection of value since there simply was such a short supply of the cards around. This, to me, is very similar to presale pricing. For every set now, presale pricing is wildly inflated. Sure, there may be a card or two that after presale shoots up in price, but the overwhelming, overwhelming majority of cards from a new set will plummet after presale ends. I'll give you an example of this. First, Cephalid Colosseum, which was reprinted in Modern Horizons 3. During Modern Horizons 3 presale, the previous printing of Cephalid Colosseum, which was also the only 
non-foil printing of the card at the time, cost $18, an absurd price for an uncommon. In my video on the most expensive reprints in Modern Horizons 3, I warned that this price would go down, that the Modern Horizons 3 printing of the card especially would not come even close to that price tag. Lo and behold, that's what happened. The Modern Horizons 3 Cephalid Coliseum costs, as of the recording of this video, 14 cents. Even the original printing dropped all the way down to $5 and change. Another example, Meat Hook Massacre 2, at the time I recorded my video on the best Duskborn cards for Commander, was pre-selling at $30 a piece. But now that the set is released, you can pick up a copy for just $11. This is why we always wait until the first true day of launch to begin the booster box game, because pre-sale pricing would mean every box would always pass, and by a lot. But those pre-sale prices are a lie. So just in terms of how we produce videos, we actually opened the very first box of a booster box game a few days before launch in order to begin editing and prepping it. And we usually try and guess whether it will pass by punching in the pre-sale prices. Or rather, we used to do that because there's no point to doing it anymore because we learned quickly that if we use pre-sale pricing, even just for a standard set, the booster boxes would not only pass, but pass by a lot. Outlaws at Thunder Junction, and Duskmorn, even murders at Karlov Manor and Ravnica Remastered all showed values of $300, $400 boxes, but that's just because the pre-sale prices are so universally inflated before the marketplace truly goes live at launch. We would never, ever be able to sell cards for those values. While indeed some players do buy cards at pre-sale prices, those prices are not reflective of the true value of those cards. And it is through many, many booster box games that we have seen just how universally false pre-sale prices are. I do always say buy singles, and I mean it, but for the love of Urza, do not pay pre-sale prices. Sure, a couple cards may shoot up in price at launch, but the rest will fall and fall hard. Do not pay markups, and pre-sale prices on singles are almost always essentially that, markups. And one more thing that's critical to mention about card prices is the relationship between card power level and card price. Not all good cards are expensive, but most expensive cards are good cards. The better the card is, the more likely that the price of the card represents its true value, so to speak. And again, we're talking about looking at the lowest possible price to buy a card, regardless of version. Maybe there is an expensive variant of a card, but what if all the other versions are only worth a few cents? What does that tell you? Well, it implies that the value of the card is not actually tied to its strength, and therefore its price is probably not as stable as a card that has a lot of different expensive printings, since those cards will be played more often and therefore have a higher demand from a gameplay standpoint. At the end of the day, there are always going to be many different ways to evaluate the worth of Magic the Gathering products and cards. I would never cast my methods as the one way, or even the best way, but simply as a way. One way among many. Maybe you disagree with me in some videos, but hopefully, through that disagreement, you can more easily and more clearly come to an understanding of what you do believe, of what value a product holds for you. And if you walk away from purchasing a Magic the Gathering product feeling confident and happy about the purchase, then that's the goal. It's my goal in making these videos, and clearly, it should be your goal in watching them. I think, too, by seeing the many different ways many different people evaluate products, you can use these myriad methods as a means to reach those conclusions. In other words, if you tune into a video where an aged instructor is claiming that a $30 to $40 Ponder promo is not really that great of a value, instead of immediately attributing the claim to manipulation or incompetence, maybe ask why. Why does this person believe that? And again, you may not agree with the why, but through hearing as many different perspectives as possible and not reacting with cynical dismissal to them, you might get a better idea of the larger, more complex picture. But that is, of course, simply my respectful rebuttal. And now I really want to hear from you. What value do you give to promo cards? Did you pick up a copy of Festival in a Box? And if so, did you feel it was money well spent? Let me know in the comments below. 
And remember, I'm giving away 40 fetch lands on my next Whatnot stream. Tune in, let's hang out and talk about magic, and maybe you'll walk away with a free play set of fetch lands, huh? That's not bad, nor is getting $15 to spend on whatever you want, from Magic the Gathering cards, to products and accessories, to anything. Just create a brand new account by going to www.whatnot.com forward slash invite forward slash Tolarian College and claim that $15 credit, then tune in and hang out with me and maybe get some free fetch lands in the process. I'll see you on Monday and thank you to Whatnot for sponsoring this video. Next time on Shuffle Up and Play. Today, the Proliferate Cube. This is a cube where dice are the most important thing and the Proliferate mechanic lets you do different stuff with them. So we have energy, we have poison counters, all kinds of cool stuff going on. Come and if you think about it, you've created the cubiest cube because your cube needs the most little cubes. Oh my In god! Order. All right, third card. Oh! <laughs> wow, yes. we're so happy and excited. It's so great. Yay. It's so Playing a Johnny Caller of the Prize. I'm so dead. Stop. I'm so dead. Ideally. What's your life total? Alexa, play Sandstorm by Daru. Why is it always Sandstorm by Daru? <laughs>